реалізована, але не потрібно це описувати у Google файлі, бо це вже не функціональна вимога, це не є функціональна. А, тобто, зрозуміло. Так, ще в мене було питання. Система... Так. От, система повинна надавати інтуїтивний та зручний інтерфейс. Це чітко не функціональна вимога. Будь ласка, приберіть її з функціональних. Так, можливість швидкого та точного пошуку компанії. Та -та -та. Швидко. Це не функціональна вимога. Тобто, будь ласка, подивіться, це добре, що ви заповнюєте, добре, що у вас є якісь неточності, ви їх зараз подивитеся, ну не зараз, а після лекції, та перепишете. А, так, ну зрозуміло. Тобто, хтось перший написав от назву і розшифровку, і всі інші пішли також це писати. Або жирним там виділять, де от саме функціональна вимога, а де там розшифровка. Ну, тобто, бо це занадто багато тут для Google файлу. Так, і, наприклад, користувач має щось там додавати, редагувати, видаляти. Це можна замінити одним функціональна, одною функціональною вимогою редагування, наприклад, там чогось. А, так, це такі трохи коментарі щодо оформлення функціональних вимог. Я спеціально не називаю не прізвище, не ім'я, це не потрібно робити зараз, ви всі знаєте, про кого йде мова. Ну, значить, після лекції, будь ласка, ви зверніть на це увагу, а, бо треба трохи переписати. Так, зараз а, а, ще там доєднується хтось. Я Можете, на... якщо запитання? Так. Да. Чи є якісь ну, письмові вимоги до проєкту? Хто означає письмові вимоги до проєкту? Ви маєте на увазі технічні вимоги чи що? Ну, взагалі вимоги до проєкту, просто щоб воно у письмовому вигляді було. А, ну, я розказувала це на першій лекції доволі довго і доволі багато давала прикладів. Це на оцінку А і Б, якщо коротко, то це веб-сервіс плюс мобільний додаток. Якщо це на оцінку ніж, нижче, ніж 75, це може бути або веб-сервіс, або мобільний додаток. Якщо про мобільний додаток, то це для iOS Android. Якщо це тільки веб-сервіс, то це веб-сервіс. А щодо функціоналу, все буде узгоджуватися з вашим продакт-онером. Тобто наразі вам потрібно розділитися на команди та сформулювати функціональні вимоги. А Далі вже, коли у вас буде продакт-оунер назначений, то ви з ним будете зустрічатися і узгоджувати ваш проєкт. Тобто, що ви будете робити, які функціональні вимоги потрібно додати і виділити. Ну, тобто, це вже буде все деталізуватися на наступному етапі. Наступний етап розпочнеться з 1 жовтня. Так, я на одну хвилинку зараз переключуся і повернуся через хвилинку.
А, так, добре, продовжуємо. Так, це перше, тобто функціональні вимоги перез дивитися. Далі. А, прошлого, а, прошлої лекції ми розбирали з вами СРС-документ. І <кій> зараз я б хотіла розпочати трішки вначале, на початку лекції, розказати вам СРС-документ, те, що ви вже скоро почнете робити. Зараз я відкрию гарний приклад СРС-документу, пройдуся дуже швиденько по пунктам цього СРС-документу. І далі тоді ми вже продовжимо з новою темою файлу, бо ви будете скоро заповнювати СРС. Мені потрібно, щоб ви розуміли, що в кожному з цих пунктів писати. Зараз. Так, добре, зараз я розшарю екран. Так, зараз ви бачите на екрані. Зараз ви бачите на екрані цей СРС документ. Зараз я буду його коментувати вам. Так, добре. Тобто, перше, з чого ми розпочинаємо наш СРС-документ, це ну, все дуже логічно і дуже просто. Ви пишете назву, е, так, ви англомовний поток. Е, значить, та, окей, so we start our uh, SRS-документ with the title of the project. Uh, this SRS-документ was about startup club Nure Online. It was a few years ago when one of my team described um, Uh, we had startup club in Norea. Uh, it was placed in um, our science park, and uh, plus uh, the students decided to create some online tool, which will help students to work uh, in, um, with each other, but online. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the name of the project, software requirement specification, version 1, date of creation of this version 1 SRS document, as you remember, we will have more than one version of SRS document, because uh, through the development uh, cycle, uh, we will make some changes in requirements, in functional and non-functional requirements, so your SRS document will be changed. Okay, this is the leader uh, of the team, Vladislav. Next, next, it's a revision history. So, um, revision history show you the date of revision, version, and the author. Also, here you can input the name and uh, the titles of your um, team. So, the team which uh, will participate in the SRS document. Uh, we talk with you that uh, you, uh, all of you, will participate in creation of this document. So, in real life, uh, uh, business analytic will be responsible for SRS document, but in our study course, all of you will participate in this document. So, you will list all of the members. Okay. Uh, we will start from the first point. Uh, actually, I think that uh, next week, uh, after we will agree to, uh, sorry, 1st of October, when we will agree the product owner to each team, you can start to fill in this document. And you will start from the first point, scope. Scope show you <clears throat> what is the purpose of the system, uh, what is the aim of the system, who will use the system. So here you can read that, uh, for example, the Startup Club Nore Online is an online system which will help people to learn about startup clubs activities. And see the startups which were created by the club members. So they also define here the types of the users or the roles um, uh, of the system. Uh, they will have visitors. And uh, after 
they name uh, this role. Uh, they start to describe uh, what kind of activities will be available for this type of user. For example, visitors can see the information about startups, incubator programs, events, and so so. The next role of the system will be club members. Then they describe uh, what types of activities will be available for club members. So uh, club members, they can create and edit web pages of their startups using the service. The third role of the system will be registered users. So they describe what um, activities will be available for registered users. You will do the same. So in this point scope, you have to identify the main goal of the system, the types of the users, and which activities are available for each, uh, each of the role. Actually, I think that after you uh, agreed even within your uh, team, uh, what will be the uh, the project and uh, the goal of the project, uh, even uh, before the 1st of October, I think you can start to uh, describe um, uh, the first point of a CERAS document. It, it could be as a draft, but um, then after you will agree the product owner, you can uh, move uh, more quickly because you will already have this draft. So I think and my advice is to start uh, to define this first and second section even before 1st of October. Okay, the next point will be uh, definitions, acronyms, and abbreviations. Uh, you can construct also this uh, the table or it could be the text. Uh, in this uh, um, part, you have to identify all the definitions or abbreviations which you will use uh, within your system. So uh, this team, for example, they describe even uh, all uh, roles and um, uh, like in more details, but also they describe all of the definitions uh, which will be in their web server, so it's very convenient. Okay, next is references. Remember I told you that um, uh, you will use Google Drive to store all kinds of documentation. So here in references, you can even uh, make a link to your Google Drive and Google folder uh, where you will store all the document documentation in each sprint. But also uh, here you can uh, input the references to another systems, uh, standards, uh, whatever. Uh, overview. Uh, overview, it's like uh, what will be in the structure of your documentation, uh, what will be in each point of SRS document. Okay, so the first point, the first part of this uh, SRS document is just general uh, uh, representation of your project. So I will repeat one more time. You can start it even before the 1st of October because uh, it will not change so much after you will have a meeting with your product owner. Next part, second part. Second part, uh, describe you more details about your future project. It's more about uh, like design of your project. So project perspective. Uh, in this part, you have to write um, uh, what will do your system, uh, what it can give, what it can bring to your end users, what values it will bring to your end users. Uh, this team, uh, they create very detailed distress document and they even input here a deployment diagram which show um, uh, on which part will be divided your system. So they describe that the system will consist of a database, of a web server, and client part and uh, they describe it even uh, with the text so they write a database server contain mysql database and so so uh, then uh, the uh, web server will do this this and this and the client part will do this this and this so even very detailed they make the design of the future system Next part, it's product functions. Product functions, it's very simple. You will just copy your functionality from the Google document and then paste it here in this part. So product functions will uh, show to product owner and it will show to your team uh, which functionality uh, will be available for uh, end users. It could be the text, but my advice is um, 
uh, to draw it uh, like a list. So just list of functionality uh, of your project. For example, registration, authorization, I don't know, order uh, the products, uh, buy products. So the list of functions. And here you should not uh, write any detailed description or functionality or how it should work. So uh, for this detailed explanation of functionality, we will have another part of the document. So actually you also can input the draft of functionality from Google document here in this point 2.2. .2. Uh, if you have any questions, please, you can ask me. Next part, it's about user characteristics. So roles of users within your system. Uh, for example, you create an uh, electronic e-shop, e so you will have uh, people who sell the products, you will have uh, people who buy the products, you will have administrator of the system. So please specify here the user roles, plus you have to identify which activities or which functionality will be available for each of uh, these roles. For example, uh, in this system, they have four types of user characteristics. Uh, they have visitors, which can only use the system to look for information, look information about startups and club members, but they can't do anything. Then they have another role, registered user. They can rate and comment the startups. Then they have startups and club members. This is the third role. Uh, they can create and edit startup pages, give information about their startups. Then they have the fourth role, is administrator, and they must have access to ban the user, change the user, change the permission. So they very shortly describe user characteristics and available functionality. General constraints. General constraints, it's about constraints to your system. Um, we talk on the first lecture, we talk about constraints. Constraints, it's um, not only about uh, technical constraints of your system. Uh, it could be constraints on the um, language, it could be constraints on the, I don't know, type of the files which you upload to download. So any kind of constraints. Next point, it's assumptions and dependencies. Uh, you have to list uh, two or three assumptions and two or three dependencies. It will be enough for your system. For example, uh, the system work will be dependent on the I don't know, some technologies, uh, for example, in this example, uh, the team uh, wrote that HTML5 or later version of HTML will be okay for their system. You can also write technical dependencies. It will be okay for this part. Part number three, external uh, interface requirements. Uh, here in this part, it will be more about technical part or technical side of your application. And uh, here you have to describe user interfaces, hardware, software, and communication interfaces of your system. You can start from software interfaces, for example. It will be the most uh, simple part for you because you, uh, I think that you already discussed within your team which kind of technology you will uh, use. Yeah, so you can start from this point. And uh, part about user interfaces, hardware and communication, you can, for example, leave for the second version of a CRS document. Uh, so it will be also okay if you will edit this part during your zero sprint or even in the beginning of the first sprint it will be okay next part it's about functional requirements and this is uh, the most important part of this SRS document from my point of view this is uh, very important for your product owner so as you remember you wrote the list of functional requirements in google document then you input functional requirements in the part 2.2 in the beginning of this document for example, you have 10 functional requirements in Google Docs, then you, you, you should have the same 10 functional requirements in uh, the first, in the second part of CRS document. Uh, it was um, part 2.2. 
product functions. So I am, as a product owner, I will check that the name of your functional requirements and that the amount of functional requirements will be the same in each part of this document. It's very important. So you can uh, copy uh, functional requirements from this part to point to input them into this part 3.2 functional requirements but here in each functional requirements you have to describe very detailed how it will work in your system and this part is very important for your team for team of developers and testers so for example the first name of the function will be registration so as a bold text you input the name of the function for example registration and then you have uh, four, six <coughs> six points uh six parts or sub parts where you describe in more details in first part you have to input introduction introduction means that you describe how this function registration will work within your system for example unregistered users or visitors they don't have many permissions because it's may lead to hack hacker attacks so uh, they must go through the registration process for this user must create accounts and they have to put for example login password and email this moves him to registration form so this is introduction about this specific function next point is inputs inputs show you what information you have to input uh, uh, in the beginning of this function so to make registration you have to input what for example login email and password okay then it's important to identify the constraints to each of these parts so login for example minimum four symbols or characters yes maximum 32 for email minimum four maximum 32 and for example it's mandatory to have uh, symbol um, add and dot within your email so all these constraints it's mandatory to input because it's very important uh, because after you describe these functions um, such detailed you give this document to your um, uh, to your uh, programmers they will open this description and then they will understand how they should uh, develop uh, this function registration moreover this description will be very important to your tester because testers they also will look uh, and this is a rest document and uh, they will write their test cases so their uh, testing documentation according to these uh, input requirements next part it's processing processing describe how this function will work inside your uh, program this will also lead to uh, programmer task next part it's output what happened after this function will work correctly for example if the form was filled successfully after sending client show message that the verification link has been sent to users email if the form was filled unsuccessfully the message was incorrect and so information will appear or something like this error handling next point will show you what happened if this function worked incorrectly or if you input incorrect information and here you have to also identify step by step very detailed what happened if if i input login incorrectly if i input password incorrectly constraints Const constraints show you constraints for your current function registration then we go to next function next function in your application will be login for example so in the same way you have to define uh inputs outputs introduction processing and error handling to your function login so if you define for example 10 functions in the beginning of SRS document then to each 10 function you have to apply this format of identifying introduction and put processing output error handling and constraints so as you can see this is quite long description of your functional requirements uh, for example this group of students they had i don't remember but more than 20 functions so their SRS document it's about 38 pages uh, i don't ask you to have 
30, 40, 50 functions. No, it will depend on your project, but uh, now you can see the structure. Okay, I scroll this document because it had a lot of functions, but it's quite good example. And I already upload this example into the daily railway, so you can use it. Okay, one second. Okay, after you describe all functions in the same way using this template, uh, we move to the next part, and next part will be your ML diagrams. And we'll start from our use case diagram. So all of you know how to construct a use case diagram. You can use any uh, any tool to construct this use case diagram. If you have any questions, please you can write me. I will give you some uh, examples of the system which you can use. Uh, so my advice is uh, not to create a SRS doc. Uh, sorry, my advice is not to create a use case diagram for whole the system, because it will be um, not convenient to read and to understand. My advice is to construct use case diagram for each role type of your system. So if you have, for example two roles in your system, for example, I don't know, teachers and students, then you will present me two use case diagrams, one for teacher, one for student. <clears throat> You're familiar with use case diagram, I would not explain you how to construct it. So it's mandatory uh, to construct use, use case diagram on the um, beginning of our work. So on the zero sprint, it's mandatory to create this use case diagram. It will be very convenient to uh, communicate with uh, you. I mean, product owner will communicate with each team and it will be very convenient if you will present use case diagram. So we can uh, discuss your system looking uh, at this diagram. Okay, so you create a um, uh, use case diagram uh, for each row in your system. And uh, uh, it's also very convenient to check if you're correct or no, because I will open the first part of this rest document where you have part user roles or user characteristics. And if in this part you define that you have three roles uh, in your system, then you, have, you should have three is diagram so it's very convenient <clears throat> uh, okay next next part uh, uh -huh. it's also use case use case for each role next part is um it could be class of objects or it could be also diagrams uh this part I think uh, you have to remember or write somewhere some notes because, for example, this point, class and objects, you can finish during your first sprint, even during your first sprint, it will be okay. You should not show it in the beginning because um, you will have design of your system during zero and first sprint, so it's okay if you will... Um, input class and objects a little bit later, not uh, before the first sprint, so uh, for the late stages, it's okay. And uh, next part, it will be part about non-functional requirements. So previously, uh, you will describe very detailed functional requirements of the system. Functional requirements show us uh, the functionality of your system. But then we have to describe non-functional requirements. Non-functional requirements show us how the system will work. So uh, when I check uh, the Google document, I see a few non-functional requirements which you uh, input in Google document. And it was requirements about performance, about uh, usability, about portability. So please, uh, this is a part 3.5 where you should uh, input non-functional requirements. Uh, actually, there are much more non-functional requirements types than you can see here. But for us, it's enough if you will uh, define just six non-functional requirements. This is requirements about performance, reliability, availability, security, maintainability, and portability. 
Also, non-functional requirements you can finish during the zero sprint or beginning of the first sprint. It will be okay for all the teams. Don't forget that non-functional requirements should be described uh, with some numbers. So it's not just general representation that systems should work quickly. No, this is not good for a stress because for somebody quickly it's one second, for somebody quickly it's 10 seconds. So you have to describe everything quantity. Yes, we have to measure each non-functional requirements. Uh, to make your life more simple, I uh, download uh, some, uh, I uh, input some examples of a SRS document with non-functional and functional requirement description in Dell, so you can uh, check it. Um, next point will be about design constraints and logical database requirements. Also, database uh, will be, I think, in 80% of your project. So uh, almost all projects will contain database. Uh, for this, you have to draw entity relationship diagram and input it in a SRS document. Also, entity relationship diagram you can input in a SRS document during your first sprint. It will be also okay because you will have uh, during your first sprint in the beginning you will have time for designing of your system and uh, this time you can spend for uh, class diagram for air diagram so it will be okay so you will have for example srs version 2 and uh, in uh, the second version of your srs document you will input all this type of diagrams uh, also, here uh, you will input uh, uh, DFD diagrams, the transition and sequence diagram, and it's also okay if you will input them into the first sprint. So it's also okay, you can leave this part for first sprint. So let's agree that before the first sprint, you have to show to your product owner um, uh, all parts before part uh 3.4 so the last part which is mandatory you finish uh, with use case okay i finish with uh, this very detailed description of srs document please any questions так студенти якщо у вас з'явилися будь-які питання щодо заповнення срез документу я постаралася дуже детально його описати показати вам на дуже гарному прикладі якщо є якісь питання як заповнювати той чи інший пункт будь ласка задавайте зараз бо в принципі ще раз ми розпочинаємо з першого пункту перший пункт там де Цілі проекту, характеристики користувачей ви вже можете починати заповнювати. Навіть до того, як ми надали вам продукт онера бо це буде чернетка, вона не дуже зміниться. Це перша частина. А далі, другу і третю частину ви повинні будете завершити повністю на протязі нульового спринта до початку першого спринта. Це буде до 8 жовтня. Тобто з 1 по 8 жовтня ви повинні будете закінчити ваш СРС документ. І останній обов'язковий пункт – це ось там, де юзкейс діаграма. Далі вже там, де йдуть додаткові діаграми, такі як діаграма класів, діаграма стану, послідовності, сікенс, DFD, це можна буде доробити протягом першого спринту. Бо на першому спринті для кожної команди у вас буде виділений час на проектування системи. Це нормально. І там ви можете будувати всі ці діаграми, зробити, наприклад, SRS версія 2, додати всі ці діаграми і презентувати це на першому спринті вашому продуктовнику. Якщо щось зараз не зрозуміло, будь ласка, питайте. У мене питання, так, прошу. Так, так. Яке питання? Питання стосовно, якщо, наприклад, були видвинуті, видвинуті якісь певні вимоги до цієї системи, але потім в процесі було виявлено, що ну, неможливо це виконати, як, як це далі узгоджується з продуктом? Це ви кажете про функціональні вимоги? Е, так. 
Ну, це абсолютно нормально по джалу, коли ви зараз напишете ряд функціональних вимог, і навіть ви їх узгодите з вашим продактоунером, а він скаже, так, добре, я згоден, ви робите цю систему, мені все подобається. На якомусь етапі, скажімо, там, після першого спринту, ви зрозумієте, що якісь вимоги вам вже не потрібні, а якісь ви не зможете виконати. Ну, це нормально, ви їх видалите, ці вимоги, можливо, замість цих ви додасте якісь інші. Добре, дякую. Тобто по джалу це така флексі, бо зараз буде розказувати методологія, що це абсолютно окей. Але все ж таки, ми з чогось починаємо, так? У нас є якийсь рад вимог, ми їх формулюємо, записуємо в Google документ та ОСРС, малюємо нашу юзкейс-діаграму, далі я розкажу, які ми ще документи створимо, починаємо працювати. Ну, ми ж не можемо ні з чого почати. А далі вже, якщо вони будуть якось змінюватися, видалятися, додаватися, це абсолютно окей. І це так і буде. А я знаю ну, з моєго досвіду, тобто буває таке, що от приходить класна команда, в них суперова ідея, ми робимо функціонал, узгоджуємо його, а, обов'язково ми робимо, виставляємо пріоритети, це вже ви будете з продактоунером перед першим спринтом робити пріоритети, ми зробили, найбільш складні такі фічі ми винесли на останок, і коли ось доходить команда до, скажімо, четвертого спринту, до останнього, вони розуміють, що якісь фічі, які вони залишили на останок, вони вже не можуть їх зробити, ну, це чи складно, чи не вистачає часу, ну, ми з розумінням на це ставимося, це нормально, якщо, якщо тільки ми не беремо ситуацію, коли команда не виконує завдання, тобто просто байдикує, чи нічого не робить, ну, це, звичайно, ми не, ну, це, звичайно, неприйнятно. Так, добре. Якщо питань немає, тоді я звертаю цей документ. Він же є на ДЕЛІ. Він дуже класнючий, бо його заповнював класний бізнес-аналітик. А, так, тепер, тепер я тоді відкриваю Agile. Тобто друга наша мета сьогодні – це поговорити, розпочати розуміти, що таке Agile. Зараз розширю лекцію. Так, ну, в мене ще питання, як звичайно, ми можемо працювати без перерви, закінчити раніше, чи ми зробимо перерву? Як ви хочете, мені все одно. Давайте без перерви. Так, тоді... Зараз... Так, добре, сьогодні розказує Agile, наступний раз буду розказувати вже Scrum, бо Scrum він є ну, якби основним представником Agile. А, так, зараз секундочку. А, так, окей, so we start from, uh, from Agile. Uh, Agile is a flexible methodology will help, which help you to develop software project uh, using some uh, uh, predefined uh, rules or uh, steps. Uh, I will not explain you uh, the waterfall model because all of you are familiar with this model, but I would like to make some comparison with um, traditional approach and agile approach. So in traditional approach, as you remember, uh, for example, in waterfall model, uh, we go through the predefined steps such as analysis of problem domain, yes, then software requirements, um, then design, then uh, programming and testing and each of the steps uh, they go step by step so we cannot uh, go uh, through the steps then we decided to return no it's impossible so for example you want to develop some web service you make analysis you write the requirements you make the design of your future system you start to programming and then you understand that you made some mistakes uh, on the first stages um for example you made wrong design or you miss some requirements uh, but you cannot return to the steps and you spend some amount of time and you spend the money of your product owner 
what you should do, you should start from the beginning and uh, it's not good for business people. Uh, they would not be satisfied that you spent time and money, but now you have some mistakes or your product owner decided that he want to do something in another direction. He want to um, create some new functionality or something like this. So now this uh, model is not popular as you know of course uh, but i should uh, say some comments that some of the companies still use the waterfall model because the uh, waterfall model as all other models has some advantages and disadvantages the advantages of the waterfall model and all traditional models in general that uh, first of all they are very simple uh, they are very understandable so if uh, the new team member come uh you should not spend time uh, for describing him this model so it's very very simple uh waterfall model is uh, quite good works for the project where your requirements is sustainable and uh, you can uh, identify these requirements one time in the beginning of the project and your requirements would not change in this situation if you know your project from the beginning nothing will be changed yes you can use this waterfall model because as i uh, told you it's very simple and very understandable uh what kind of project is okay for waterfall model it could be project related to medical sphere uh because for example medical sphere the requirements uh, they are not changed uh, so quickly you know how this structure works so it's okay but of course uh, uh okay if you want to develop for example some very very simple um, website or landing page and you made it one million times and uh, this is not like e-shop for example so you know the requirements and your product owner uh know what he wants okay uh, it's small project and you identify the requirements and for example you need one or two months to develop this uh very um very simple website okay you can also use waterfall model but in all other cases uh waterfall model not uh, works good so uh, the, uh people um uh, discover agile methodology agile it's flexible methodology and uh, uh through the lecture today i will explain many times why it's flexible so agile methodology in principle it's use the same strategy as waterfall model so the steps inside the agile models uh, will be also uh, almost the same so as in traditional approach you go through the same steps analysis design coding and testing but in traditional approaches or traditional models the time scales go down up and down yes so you go through all the steps uh step by step you cannot return you cannot uh, go like through the circle but in a child uh the time scales it's like horizontal and it means that during each sprint and you remember the sprint it's a short period of time from one week to a month and in each sprint we go through all these steps so in sprint one we go through analysis design coding and testing then next sprint number two we again go through all the steps analysis design coding and testing and each sprint we go through all these steps and it's very convenient because uh, uh, now we are in the sprint one you make analysis design and in the coding uh step you find some mistakes okay this is not the problem we finish our sprint then in two weeks we start new sprint and we can make any changes in the step analysis or design of the system so if we find some mistakes we can uh fix these mistakes in the next sprint so we should not wait months or two months until we finish all the project and of course it's very convenient this is one of the flexibility of agile approach uh, imagine that you finish your sprint you present your work to your product owner and the product owner said mm, you know i don't like what you develop uh, i think you will do it in another way i don't like this this and this and you as a team say okay in next sprint uh we will um, 
and change everything as you said we will uh, uh, change the design or we will change uh, requirements or whatever okay so this is not a problem this is also flexibility we can change our requirements uh even each sprint so we can add something we can change something so it's okay for agile approach okay so after we said that we will use agile methodology people create agile manifesto agile manifesto it's like a general representation of the philosophy of agile you wouldn't find here any technical details no it's just general idea of agile approach and uh, agile manifesto consists of four points you can find it in any language in google i will explain it now uh blue part uh, of the each uh, agile um, uh, statement left part blue one is more important than the right part individuals and inter interactions over processes and tools so what does it mean in agile individuals peoples and interaction between people are much more important for us than following the processes or some tools so in general in agile work is based on the people motivated people and individuals next working software over comprehensive documentation working software is the most important thing in agile so after you finish each sprint you show to your product owner working software no documentation uh, not report but working software and business people they evaluate this working software and give you some feedback statement number three customer collaboration over contract negotiation of course we understand that in the beginning of our work we have to sign some contract and we will follow this contract but co a customer and uh, relationship with customer is much more important for us so if customer uh, will uh, give us um, some comments suggestions recommendations whatever we will change the contract because the customer is the highest priority for us and statement number four, responding to change or following a plan. It's flexibility of agile. Uh, even on the late stages of development, uh, we are ready to changes. And it's flexibility of agile. Please remember this agile manifesto. And uh, I will ask you on the sprints and all other uh, assistants, I will also ask you about the agile manifesto. It's very simple and it shows you like philosophy of agile. After people create this agile manifesto, they created 12 principles of agile software. These 12 principles of agile software, they explain you much more in details um, agile manifesto. So now I will explain you these 12 principles and um, of course, all of you will follow these principles during the, our course. Uh, they are also not so much about details, technical details, but uh, when we will, uh, when we will, uh, I will explain about the Scrum. I will make like, like links, uh, Scrum techniques and Scrum meetings, artifacts, and whatever to these principles okay so the first principle says that our highest our highest priority is to satisfy the customers through early and continuous delivery of valuable software so the highest priority for each team is satisfy the customers the customers should be happy and how uh, you have to show him working software early what does it mean early it means that we will work through the two week sprints and in the end of each sprint you will show him working software second principle welcome change in requirements even late in the development it's what i told you agile is flexible and we can change the requirement even uh, on the sprint number three you have four sprints and after you show me sprint number three i can say you uh, that I would like to change some requirements or add some new requirements. It's okay for your job. Number three, 
deliver work in software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. It's what we talk with you many, many times. You will work through the sprints and sprints duration will be two weeks. Number four, business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. What does it mean? It means that uh, you will have big amount of meetings in Scrum and uh, you will have a meeting which is called stand-up meeting or daily meeting. Daily meeting, uh, it's uh, understandable from the name of this meeting, it will be everyday meetings. It means that every day, each day, uh, the Scrum team should meet together online, it's not a problem. And if business people, it means uh, your product owner, if he would like to present on this meeting, it's okay. Um, in real life, uh, I know of many situations when product owners from, for example, United, United States, they are present on the daily meeting with the team in Ukraine. It means that the team uh, had, uh, they had a meeting every day and every day in the same time, product owner connect to their meeting. So he watched the progress on the project. He gives some feedback. He asks a question. So if business people would like to participate in this meeting, it's okay. In our study course, of course, it's impossible because I have many teams. So for me, it's impossible to present uh, each day and daily meeting. So you will be um, uh, only within your team. But you should know that uh, it could be also with product owner. Okay, number five, principle number five. Build project around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support them what they need and trust them to get the job done. Uh, before the, we had uh, the war and COVID, uh, uh, in Scrum teams, um, in Scrum teams were uh, the people uh, who were responsible for a good atmosphere in the team. So it's people, it was person who was responsible, I don't know, from um, uh, you should have tea and coffee to make breaks and some cookies. Uh, and for example, you have bad internet connection, okay, people, uh, these people will help you. Or for example, I don't know, you want to develop your skills, you want to go to some seminar, so the company can pay for the seminar. So everything to work your, to make your work more effective. Uh, principle number six, the most efficient and effective way of convenient information, uh, it will be face-to-face -face conversation. In Scrum and in the job, we talk that uh, um, you have to work face-to-face -face, and for this, you will have a lot of meeting. Meeting uh, between the team members, meeting with product owner, meeting with uh, stakeholders, because face-to-face -face conversation is the best way to get some feedback and to discuss to discuss the problems if you have. Okay, principle number seven. Work and software is the primary measure of the progress. So work and software is the most, most important things um, uh, in our work. So the product owner, he wants to see work and software. For him, it's not so important to see your uh, reports, as I told you, documentation and whatever. Eight, agile processes promote sustainable development. Uh, we will talk about sustainable development uh, in the Scrum. What does it mean, sustainable development? You work uh, some amount of hours, and this amount of hours is the same each day, each week, each month. So in real life, you know that uh, you have to work um, each day eight hours, five days per week, means 40 hours per week. So you can predict how many work you can do each week. I will also explain you how to calculate the velocity and capacity of the team and velocity and capacity of each team member. So based on your working experience, you can predict how many functionality you will produce each sprint. And this is sustainable development, so we can calculate everything. 
Number nine, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design. Uh, we say that uh, in uh, Scrum and in Agile, it's very important to have high quality code and um, it's important to uh, develop according to some uh, coding standards, according to um, technical excellence. So for us, it's uh, important. Um, so for us, it's uh, not enough if the functionality will work. We also would like to see in the code uh, that uh, the quality of the code is uh, uh, high level. And uh, Scrum, it's not so much oriented on technical um, design, but in Agile, there are another methodologies such as for example, XP, extreme programming, maybe somebody heard about extreme programming. Uh, extreme programming is also um, one of the part of Agile. Uh, I will describe you XP. Uh, and for example, in extreme programming, there are a lot of um, rules about technical excellence and testing standards and coding standards. So a lot of uh, attention is um, focused on the uh, technical excellence. Number 10, simplicity is the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Uh, what does it mean, simplicity? We said that uh, in the first stages of development, in the first sprint, we take just the simplest functionality. In this functionality, we make a uh, design and code very simple to avoid a big amount of mistakes. And then on the latest stages, on the next sprint, on the short, uh, we can make refactoring, uh, we can make some optimization and so, so. Number 11, the best architectures, requirements, and design uh, emerge from self-organizing teams. So we said that Scrum team is self-organizing team. What does it mean? It means that, first of all, Scrum team is independent team like small IT company. You have all the roles within your Scrum team. You have business analytics, you have programmers, testers, uh, I don't know, architectures. So you can solve all the tasks within the project. From the other point of view, self-organizing team means that you can um, uh, solve all the problems uh, independently within your team. In your team, you will have Scrum Master, and this is people who will be responsible for solve all kinds of problems. If you cannot solve problems uh, within your team, you can communicate with product owner, with me, for example, but you are self-organizing teams. And the last 12 principles said that at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective. And uh, we will work through these regular intervals. Uh, at the end of each interval, it means at the end of each sprint, we will look at this sprint, uh, this meeting called retrospective, and uh, we will analyze what was good and what was bad in our sprint. Uh, maybe if we had some problems, how we can solve these problems in next sprint to avoid such kind of problems. So each sprint, we, uh, the team have to analyze, uh, like uh, look in the past, yes, uh, and uh, analyze what was bad and how we can solve these problems, how we can improve it uh, in the next sprint. So this is uh, shortly 12 principles of Agile software. If you have any questions, please ask me. If no questions, we can continue. Flavors of Agile. Agile, it's like a big family of uh, methodologies or um, it's like umbrella. Inside this umbrella of Agile, we have some uh, very specific methodologies. In our course, I will explain you Scrum, but also one of the most uh, popular is Lean, it's Extreme Programming and Kanban. After I explain you Scrum, Scrum, I will explain you next week on the next lectures. Uh, I will also explain you XP, Extreme Programming and Kanban. Moreover, I will ask you on the uh, latest sprints, um, it will be on the sprints three and four, I will ask you to take some uh, 
some specific uh, requirements from XP and Kanban and uh, try to implement them in, in Scrum. So I explained how it works, of course, I will give you examples, because uh, uh, methodologies within the child, they very good, uh, can be combined with each other. So it's like um, complementary. Um, okay, so as I told you, uh, the most uh, popular is Scrum, XP, and Kanban. If you want to find uh, some literature in the internet and to read some advanced uh, information about these methodologies, you can just input the name of the methodology and um, uh, the, you know, people uh, who invent this methodology. For example, uh, you can input Scrum and Ken Schwaber and you will find a lot of literature or XP and Ken Beck and you will find a lot of uh, uh, advanced literature about uh, these methodologies. Okay, uh, and now my plan is to show you a um, short video. It's very short. It's like summarizing uh, what I told you give me one minute and i will share my screen okay так, one second. Sometimes when I run the video, you cannot hear. Please tell me if you cannot hear because тут є розшарити вкладку, є розшарити вікно. Я не пам'ятаю, здається, вікно, щоб було все гарно. Або навпаки вкладку, я завжди путаюсь. Зараз скажете мені. Розширити вкладку. Вкладку, да? Ти, ти також думала, що вкладку. Так. Добре. Воно коротеньке. Graduation from Stanford University. One fine day, he receives a mail from Star Trek Technologies for an interview for the designation of a software engineer, as referred by the university. Alex was really happy and excited about this and starts preparing for his interview next week. While he was preparing, Alex came across the term downtime. Alex has no idea. What is a downtime? He decided to seek help from his uncle John, a software engineer. John explained that downtime is a specific time frame allocated to deploy or update changes for a software product in a real-time environment. And this happens because most of the softwares we use today are developed using the waterfall model. For example, Cisco, one of the popular leaders in IT and networking globally, is using agile methodology for their subscription billing platform, SBP, as it was originally developed using the waterfall model. After adopting the agile methodology, Cisco's product improved its overall efficiency, where defects were reduced by 40% compared to the previous releases, and defect removal efficiency increased by 14%. Upon explaining what downtime is, John further added that downtime is a small part of the waterfall model. It is the traditional way of developing softwares using a software development lifecycle, where the whole product is treated as one single unit, and the development of one phase starts only after the completion of the previous phase. Adding new features or updating the existing feature in a waterfall model-based product needs a specific time frame known as downtime to avoid disturbance in the workflow of an organization where applying changes in a waterfall-based product might produce irrelevant results or product failure. The waterfall model is the earliest or the traditional model used for software development, where the output of one phase acts as the input for the preceding phase, consisting of a series of steps, where each phase has specific deliverables that act as the input for the next phase, as it avoids overlapping of phases, as these phases are dependent on each other. This method is simple and easy to understand, where prerequisites are pre-known, documented earlier, and technology remains static where there is no need for ambiguous requirements due to the delay in software delivery. In contrast, the final version is available only after completing the entire software lifecycle process with any deviations if available. 
Changes in the waterfall model contain high risk, as changes include a new, revised version of the entire software running the entire series of steps again and again. For example, a tap and pay machine, where the machine first validates whether the customer's account is funded with sufficient funds or not, and then initiates the transaction for money transfer. Unless the validation is processed, the transaction cannot be initiated. Alex was curious and asked Uncle John, is there any way to overcome the drawbacks of the waterfall model? John replies, yes. Agile methodology was introduced to overcome the problems faced in the waterfall model, where agile-based products are developed by breaking the entire product process into microservices or phases, which is faster to execute and deploy changes on the go. There is no need to worry about other or previous tasks while working on one particular phase avoiding product failure. Agile-based products don't require any particular time frame, downtime, to deploy changes. Unlike the waterfall model, where the whole product is treated as one single unit, and each process is dependent on the preceding processes where deploying changes leads to downtime. How Agile products are developed? Agile-based products are developed using the Agile lifecycle. At first, the developed product is implemented in an actual working environment for reviews from clients and stakeholders to check its deliverables and functionality. After client reviews, the official product is launched in a real-time working environment, where Agile methodology focuses on satisfying the consumer needs by efficiently utilizing the resources and avoiding additional risks or deviations in the product. For example, providing a trial beta version of the software for the end user to experience the software towards its deliverables and results will be helpful in refining and reviewing the product like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, etc. After understanding all about Agile methodology, Alex asks Uncle John, are companies implementing Agile in their workspace nowadays? John replies, yes. Companies are moving towards Agile methodology due to its flexibility and advantages over traditional systems. By adopting Agile for their Sony Interactive environment, Sony noticed a major difference where there was a reduced planning time by 28% with their framework, and downtime was reduced to the maximum, which made the company save $30 million a year. So here's a question for you. What makes Agile different from Waterfall Model? A. It is dependent on microservices. B. Agile consumes more time. C. The process is broken down into several phases. D. None of the above. Please give it a thought and post your answers in the comments section below. Three lucky winners will receive Amazon gift vouchers. Agile methodology aims to meet the consumer's requirements to the maximum in deploying changes in a rapidly developing environment, where Agile Manifesto principles brings an innovative set of rules and protocols to help developers overcome the challenges faced in the traditional practices, waterfall model, making Agile flexible and efficient. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Here's your reminder to subscribe to our channel and click okay, on the- Okay, so I hope that uh, this uh, small video show you also interactively the main idea of Agile. So our plan is uh next week we will have lecture where i will describe the scrum and it will be very good because um, you will have to be prepared for the zero sprint next week you finish your google doc uh so all the team have to be defined the functional requirements have to be defined and i also uh get uh a few emails uh, how to select sigma product owner if uh, you want uh, I repeat, please uh, put input uh, Sigma in the column product owner, and then we will see how many teams want to work with Sigma, and then we will make some interview and select. Okay, any questions about today's topic? Oh, well, every, everything is clear as for me. That's good. I try to make lectures very 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 simple uh okay guys uh так дивіться підсумуємо uh, сьогодні у мене є практичне заняття на п'ятій парі uh, з групою з другою але якщо у когось є якісь 
практичні питання. Як сформулювати функціональні вимоги, там, чи ще щось. Будь ласка, можуть і інші групи доєднуватися. І сьогодні на ПЗ, у кого є які питання, особливо по Google файлу, а також, може, по СРС-документу, будемо розбирати. Ще раз повторю, ПЗ та лаби в нас проходять... А, у форматі «Ваші питання, мої відповіді». А, так, як ви ще на стадії формування вашого проєкту, то от, от які питання є по от тому, що ви зараз робите, будь ласка, задавайте. Якщо хтось хоче узгодити тему, функціональні вимоги, ну також, будь ласка, доєднуйтесь із інших груп. Це буде абсолютно ок. Ну все, я на сьогодні все. Ви вільні, відмічайте свою присутність і тоді... На п'яті пари, у кого є питання, будь ласка, доєднуйтесь. До побачення. Добре, дякую вам. До побачення. До побачення. До побачення. До побачення.